Hello boys and girls, this is Art at Home with Mrs. Koshland. I have a project for you to try. This is called Circles and Curves. In this project, you will learn how to blend crayons. We'll need a piece of paper. You can use any type of white paper. I find construction paper and cardstock work well. I am using construction paper. This one is a six inch by nine inch, which is just a nine by 12 piece of paper that I have folded in half. So I have my construction paper and you'll also need a pencil, an eraser, and some crayons. Now your design does not need to look my, like my design. If you want to copy along, that is great. Um, but hopefully after you've done this, you can experiment with this and create some unique designs of your own. We will start by making some circles of different sizes on our paper. So here's a small circle. Maybe I'll make a medium sized circle here. Maybe I'll make a nice big circle here. Maybe I'll make a smaller circle here. Now, I am just doing this freehand, but if you want to find some things to trace around to make um, more perfect circles, that's fine. You can find containers or uh, cups or lids and you can trace around them. That is fine. Or you can do them freehand like I just did. So here I have my circles and now we're going to go ahead and add some curves. Some guidelines for adding the curves would be to start at your circles and then add a line that goes off your page or connects with another circle. Also, think gently curving lines instead of straight lines. This is a gentle curve instead of a strong curve. So you can go the other way instead of this. So if we go over to our picture, instead of using straight lines, We're going to try to use gently curving lines. This one is going to go off our paper. And then here is another gentle curve to connect. This is a long S curve. That's also a good one to use. Again, it's a gently curving line that goes one way and then goes the other way. Instead of this. And that one leads to the other one that you want to try to stay away from, which is what I call the wiggly worm line. That's great for other projects, but this one, it, it just makes it a little bit difficult to color in your areas. And lastly, when you're creating your areas, it's nice to have different sized areas. You want to try to stay away from areas that are really small or really big. Again, it's just because it makes the coloring a little bit more difficult. So let's begin. I think I'll start with this circle here and I'll just make a curve that goes off to the side of my paper. Might do the same thing up here and maybe here. Now I think I want to connect these two circles. So I'm going to use an S curve here in order to connect those, starting on the side there and then ending up in the side here. And do you see how this looks like it's connecting right into that line, which makes a nice uh, flowing look to this. I'm going to do another S curve. I'm going to start over here. And this time I'm not going to connect to one of these. I'm going to go right between here. So. There we go. Now I have some more areas that I need to break up. Go ahead and put a curved line there, a curved line there. Now your design does not need to look like mine. You can do it any way you want. One thing you do want to look at is how large your areas are. This is a very large area here. 
So I might add just another curved line like that. This is also a very large area. I could do this, but that is a straight line, and that doesn't really go with the rest of the look of this uh, project. So I have my eraser. Anytime you don't like something, just erase it. Try again. So this time I think I will go this way, and I like that a lot better. This is still very long in here. I could start here and do another S curve and cross over this line. That is fine to cross over your lines. I haven't done that anywhere else here, but that would look just fine and it looks like it's going right into those other lines. Much better than if I went like that. It doesn't quite work. Or I could make a slight curved line right in here. Slightly curving that may appear straight, but even if it was a little bit straight, that's okay because it's really connecting this whole line right here, and that is definitely a curving line. And it separates this area into two parts, which is good. Now at this point, you might want to take a look at your project and analyze it. And analyze means to look at all the different areas and make sure that you like what you've done. I am looking at this area and I don't like the way that this looks. So I'm just going to rework that and that's fine. Go ahead and erase those lines. And instead of doing that, I think I'm going to try connecting those two. This is still a really large area, so maybe, is that a curve? Yes, it is. Okay. I like that. And I do want to break this up, so I could do that here, like that. Or I could do it going this way. I think I like it like this. I think that that is the design that I will go with. Yours may look completely different. That is fine. This might be a great time to pause your video if you want to make some changes. And then you can go ahead and restart after you have your piece looking the way that you would like it to be. Now let's talk about blending. Blending is when you take two colors and you overlap them to create a mixture. I'm going to try that with my orange here and my blue. And I have overlapped and created a mixture of the two colors in here, but I can really see a difference between my blue and my orange. So that doesn't blend real well. Let's try the blue and green. Let's see if that works better. So I'll start with my green up here and then overlap my blue into it. And again, I have a new color in the middle. It's a mixture of the green and blue, but it blends very softly. I don't see where one begins and the other one ends. So how can you tell what colors blend well? Think of the color wheel. And if you don't have a color wheel, no problem. We're going to go ahead and make one right now. The three primary colors, which are the colors which everything else can be made from, are yellow, red, and blue. So those are our three primary colors. Now I know this will be a review. What happens when you mix yellow and blue together? You get green. What happens when you mix blue and red together? You get purple. 
And when you mix red and yellow together, you get orange. These are the secondary colors. Now, by having this color wheel, we can easier determine what is going to blend well with another color. It's usually the colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel. So my yellow is going to blend better with a green than it will with the purple. My orange will blend better with yellow or the red instead of the blue. In fact, we saw this up here. You see how the orange and the blue, a lot of times when you mix your opposite colors together, you get um, almost a gray browny color. Uh, so if you don't want that and you want to have a nice smooth blending, try going right next to each other on the color wheel. So let's try that right now. In your sections, you'll probably want to have at least three colors. So let's say I wanted to do these colors here. Instead of going from yellow to red to orange, I'm going to go right in order, yellow, orange, and red. I'm going to start with the yellow. And then I'm going to overlap some orange into my yellow. I'm doing this lightly to medium pressure. And then we'll do the same thing with the red. And if you do see a lot of difference, you can always go back over with a second coat. Now, you might even have different reds that you can use that might even give it a better blending look. So if I wanted to use a lighter red, let's see what happens with that. Oops, it's got a little bit of black on it. Yellow. Orange. This is a light orange and a yellow, so that blends very nicely. And this is a little lighter red, and we can see that that actually blends even better than this. So you can use your color wheel to help you to determine what colors are going to blend nicely with each other. The other tip that I have for you for blending is it is a little easier to blend if you go up and down. You've noticed with all of these that I've gone up and down in order to blend into my colors instead of going across. I go across here and then I blend a blue. Sometimes that shows a stronger line. So I, for this project, I am going to be doing the up and down blending, which I find works a little bit easier. Also, make sure that you are overlapping your colors. So if I have these three colors that I'm going to use, I look at my color wheel, red, purple, blue. So I'm going to start with my red, purple, and blue. I haven't overlapped at all. These are just three separate colors. So if I overlap my purple into my red and then I overlap it into my blue, now I am mixing the colors and that makes it blend. So that is a little bit about blending. Now we will start to color in our circle and line design. I might start with this circle right here and I'm going to look on my color wheel and I think I am going to do blue, purple, red. So I will take my red and go ahead and color in this bottom section. Then I will take the purple, and again I'm overlapping a little bit into my red so that it blends. And then I will do the same thing with the blue. This 
So that blended rather nicely. Now if you look at this and you decide you want your colors to pop a little bit more, be a little bit more bold, you can always go over with a second layer. And you do not have to do this, but if you want to, you can experiment with this. See if you like the look of that a little bit better. Now as you go along, you will find out which colors blend easier than others. And that is great because that is what this whole project is about. How to blend and finding out what colors blend best together. So now I think I'm going to go into this big circle and I will try some different colors. I think I will go with the yellow, the orange, and the red. And I remember last time by using the lighter red that's closer to that orange, it blended a lot easier. So I think that I will do that again. So I'm going to get out these colors. Go ahead and start with my yellow at the bottom. Again, I'm going in an up and down motion. And then I will try the orange. I'm just doing this with light pressure for right now, light to medium pressure. And then I can use this light red. If you happen to have a super dark orange, you could even use that. That would work really well too. But I'm going to use this light red color. And again, I'm overlapping a little bit onto my orange. And whenever you overlap, that's when you want to go a little lighter and it will blend a lot easier. So, and, and you can always go back and add more of any color if it's not you know, looking the way that you want it to look. And I like the look of that, so I am now going to go into this area. Now in this area, hmm, am I going to start here? Am I going to start here? I think it'll be easier to start here and then work my way up. In your bigger areas, you might want to pick four colors to blend into. So let's say I start with green. I could either go this way or I could go this way. I think I'm going to go this way, green, blue, purple, and if I have enough room, I can do the red. So I am going to start with my green. Now I'm going to switch directions here so that I'm going the length of my area. A little bit farther and then I will use my blue. And remember that when you overlap, you just do a little bit lighter pressure and that tends to make it easier to blend. Go right around this circle. And it looks like I'm going to only use three colors, so I'm going to get my purple, blue, purple. And again, blending means you overlap into the other color. So here I'm overlapping into my blue. And that worked out very nicely. Now I'm going to do this area and let's pick another combination. Let's see, maybe I want to do yellow, green, and blue. Should I start with my blue or should I start with my yellow? If I'm looking at this area, this is blue. So I don't really want to start with my blue here. It would be better to start with my yellow. Get my yellow. And then go into my green, lightly with that green. And then the blue. Now this blended really nicely. This is fairly strong. And that's probably because I used a fairly dark green. If I had used a lighter green, it probably would have blended a little bit better. So let's do that right 
here and see what happens. Here is the yellow. Here is a light green. Oh, wow. Look at how nicely that blends. And then I could have done my dark green. So that blends a lot nicer than this. But this is still fine. In fact, I could even, if this is too strong, I could even go back and add some light green in there. Now I've blended four colors, haven't I? Okay, and I think I like that better. When you are done coloring in your piece, you will take a black crayon, and all you're going to do is go over your lines with a dark black line. And that will clean it up and what I like to call pop your picture. The black line makes your design stand out. Now you could have done the black line in the very beginning before we started the coloring, but I find that sometimes the colors will smear with the black, so that's why I like to do it at the very end. When you're done, you should have something that looks like this, where you have your blended areas and then a nice black outline going around those areas. I hope that you had fun learning how to blend your crayons. There are so many ways that you can do this project. I encourage you to experiment and experiment some more. See how many solutions you can come up with. Happy coloring!